morning students this is economic revision lesson provided by the ministry of education this is the second revision lesson of unit 3 theory of consumer behavior the second lesson of the theory of consumer behavior is the ordinal utility theory or the indifference curve approach the ordinal utility theory states that utility is not measurable Rather, a consumer can rank or order the satisfaction that he or she derives from consumption of goods and services. In the previous revision, we saw the cardinal utility theory, which is a theory that states utility is measurable. Rather, under the ordinal utility theory approach or the indifference curve approach, utility is not measurable. That means it is difficult to attach numbers for the satisfaction that we derive from consumption of goods and services. So utility is not measurable. Rather, a consumer can rank or order the satisfaction that he derives from consumption of goods and services. Here are the assumptions of the ordinal utility theory or the indifference curve approach. First of all, the consumer is rational. That means the consumer has a clear cut preference and the consumer's maximum objective is maximizing total utility. The second one is there is complete ordering. That means a consumer can rank or order the satisfaction that he derives from consumption of goods and services. The other assumption or precondition that must be fulfilled for the ordinal utility theory is consistency. That means if a consumer prefers bundle A than bundle B, then at the same time he must not prefer bundle B than bundle A. This is consistency. This is consistency. The other assumption is transitivity. Transitivity. This assumption tells us if a consumer prefers bundle A than bundle B and bundle B than bundle C, then a consumer must prefer bundle A than bundle C. This tells us if 3 is greater than 2 and 2 is greater than 1, then 3 must be greater than 1. Greater than 1. This is transitivity, one of the assumptions of the ordinal utility theory. And there is diminishing marginal rate of substitution. This diminishing marginal rate of substitution means the principle of diminishing marginal rate of substitution is in operation. The principle of diminishing marginal rate of substitution tells us the rate by which one commodity is substituted on the same indifference curve will always decline. In short, it tells us the marginal rate of substitution, the margins of a commodity will always decline. And the last assumption is non-satiation means the bigger bundle is always preferred than that of the smaller one. So these are the assumptions of the ordinal utility theory. The indifference set shows the various combinations of two commodities that give a consumer equal level of satisfaction. Suppose a consumer consumes two goods X and Y. Now, at combination A, the satisfaction that a consumer derives from one unit of commodity X and eight unit of commodity Y is always equals to the satisfaction that he derives from consumption of two units of X and five units of Y. Because as we increase the consumption of commodity X, we are declining consumption of commodity Y. Again, when we come across from combination B to C, the satisfaction that a consumer derives from two units of X and five units of Y is always equal to the satisfaction that he got from the combination of three units of X and three units of Y. Because as we increase the consumption of good X, we are declining consumption of good Y. And finally, when we come across from combination C to combination D, then the satisfaction that the consumer derives from three units of X and three units of Y is always equal to the satisfaction that he derives from four units of X and two units of Y. Because as we increase the consumption of X, we are declining consumption of commodity Y. So, in this case, the consumer will be indifferent. Shall I consume one unit of X and eight units of Y or two units of 
x and 5 units of y. No, I have I have better to consume 3 units of x and 3 units of y. Or, no, it is better to consume 4 units of x and 2 units of good y. In this case, the consumer will be indifferent. For example, let's take this x as orange and this y as banana. This indicates that the satisfaction that we get from one orange and eight banana is equal to that of the satisfaction that we get from two orange and five banana. Because as we increased consumption of orange, we are declining consumption of banana. Combination B to C, the satisfaction that we get from two orange and five banana is equal to that of the satisfaction that we get from the combination of three orange and three banana. Because as we increase the consumption of orange, we are declining consumption of banana. Finally, when we come across from combination C to combination D, the satisfaction that we get from three orange and three banana is equal to that of the satisfaction that we get from the combination of four orange and two banana. Because as we increased consumption of orange, we are declining consumption of banana. In this case, we will be indifferent. Shall I consume one orange and eight banana or two orange and five banana? No, it's better to consume three orange and three banana. No, no, no. I have better to consume four units of orange and two bananas. In this case, the consumer will be indifferent. This is the case that leads to the indifference state. Now, let's represent the indifference state on a curve called the indifference curve. The indifference curve shows the various combinations of two commodities that gives a consumer equal level of satisfaction. So this is the graphical presentation of the indifference state. At combination A, the satisfaction that the consumer derives from one unit of X and eight units of Y is equal to that of the combination B, which is, which is two units of X and five units of Y. Again, at this point, it is equal to that of the satisfaction that he got from, from three units of Y and three units of X. And at combination D, it is equal to the satisfaction that he got from the combination of four units of X and two units of Y. And when we join these points together, point A, B, C, and D, we get the indifference curve. This curve shows the various combinations of the two commodities that gives a consumer equal level of satisfaction. On the indifference curve, any point on the indifference curve gives equal level of satisfaction. Next, let's see the marginal rate of substitution. The marginal rate of substitution is the rate by which one commodity is substituted for another on the same indifference curve. From the indifference sets, the marginal rate of substitution of commodity x for y is calculated by dividing changing the commodity y which is given up for the changing commodity x which is gained. This means changing y is y final minus y initial and changing x is x final minus x initial. So when we are going to calculate the marginal rate of substitution of x for y from combination A to combination B, if the satisfaction that we get from one unit of commodity X and eight unit of commodity Y is equal to that of two units of X and five units of Y, hence the rate by which one good is substituted for another is three. This is mathematically the marginal rate of substitution MRS of X for Y is the change in the changing commodity y that is given up for the changing commodity x that is gained. This is y final minus y initial divided by x final minus x in, uh, initial. And let's take this one as x initial and this two as x final. 
let's take this 8 as y initial and this 5 as y final and when we substitute this information on this formula the value of y final is 5 minus the value of y initial is 8 divided by the value of x final is 2 minus the value of x initial is 1 and this will give you 5 minus 8 which is minus 3 divided by 1 and this is minus 3 and when we put it out of absolute value we left with 3 we left with 3 that means when we come across from combination A to combination B, if the satisfaction that to get from 1 unit of X and 8 unit of Y is equal to that of 2 unit of X and 5 unit of Y, the rate by which one commodity is substituted for another, one X is substituted for how many units of Y? For three units of Y. This is the way of calculating the marginal rate of substitution. Again, when we come across from combination B to C, if the satisfaction that we get from 2 units of X and 5 units of Y is equal to that of 3 units of X and 3 units of Y, then the marginal rate of substitution will be, let's take this 5 as Y initial and this 3 as Y final, and let's take this 2 as X initial and this 3 as X final, then when we substitute on this formula the value of y final is 3 minus the value of y initial is 2 3 minus 5 divided by the value of x final is 3 minus x initial is 2 which is minus 2 over 1 and then this is minus 2 then when we put it out of absolute value we left with 2 now when we come across combination b to combination c we are substituting one unit of x for two units of y. Similarly, when we come across from combination C to combination D, if the satisfaction that we get from 3x and 3y is equal to that of 4x and 2y, then the MRS will be, let's take this 3 as x initial and this 4 as x final, and let's take this 3 as y initial and this 2 as y final, and then when we substitute this information on this formula, the value of y final is 2 minus y initial is 3 divided by the value of x final is 4 minus 4 minus x initial is 3 and this is minus 1 divided by 1 and this is minus 1. Then when we put it out of absolute value, we left with 1. So this tells us if you get equal satisfaction from 3x and 3y, and for units of x and two unit of y, the rate by which one commodity is substituted for another, or simply the MRS is one unit. So we can calculate the marginal rate of substitution in this way. Now, indifference map is a group of indifference curves, and from this indifference curves, higher level of indifference curves represents higher level of satisfaction and lower indifference curves represent lower satisfaction. So from this curve, the satisfaction that we get from indifference curve 3 is greater than the satisfaction that we get from indifference curve 2. Again, the satisfaction that we get from indifference curve 2 is higher than the satisfaction that we get from indifference curve 1. So the level of satisfaction increases as one moves towards the northeast and the level of satisfaction decreases as one moves towards the southwest. Another lesson that is related with the indifference curve is the properties of indifference curves. First, as I told you earlier, higher indifference curves represent higher level of satisfaction and vice versa. Vice versa means the opposed hold is true. Higher indifference curves represent higher satisfaction and lower indifference curves represent lower level of satisfaction. The other property or characteristics of the indifference curve is about the slope. The slope of the indifference curve is negative or indifference curves are negatively sloped or they are downward sloping curves. This is the indifference curve. The indifference curve is downward sloping curve or negatively sloped curve due to 
an invert relationship between the two variables that are entered in the x and y axis. As we increase consumption of commodity y, we are declining consumption of commodity x, and as we as we decline consumption of commodity y, we are increasing consumption of commodity x. So, an increase in one of the variable will decline, and a decrease in one of the variable will increase the other. So, due to this inverse relationship between that are entered in the x and y axis, then the slope of the indifference curve is always negative or it is downward sloping curve. Another property or characteristics of the indifference curve is indifference curves are convex to the origin. Convex to the origin. This is the origin. When we see from the origin, we get such a curve which is convex to the origin. By the way, indifference curves are convex to the origin due to the principle of diminishing marginal rate of substitution. Due to PDMRS, indifference curves are convex to the origin. Because the rate by which one commodity is substituted for another will always decline due to the principle of diminishing marginal rate of substitution. Another important information, the marginal rate of substitution is the slope of an indifference curve. Since the MR is, is calculated by dividing, changing the commodity Y that is given up for the changing commodity X that is gained, this change in Y over change in X will give you the vertical difference for the horizontal difference. Hence, this is the slope of a curve. So, in other words, the marginal rate of substitution, the MRS is the slope of the indifference curve. Important information about the slope of a curve is from unit 3, marginal utility is the slope of the total utility curve. Another point, marginal rate of substitution is the slope of indifference curve and the slope of the budget line is the ratio of the price of the two goods. From unit 1 lesson, the opportunity cost of a commodity is the slope of the production possibility frontier or curve and from unit 4 marginal rate of technical substitution MRT is the slope of ISO quantus. So let's see the principle of diminishing marginal rate of substitution. This principle tells us the marginal rate of substitution will always decline. It tells us the rate by which one commodity is substituted for another on the same indifference curve will always decline. In short, it tells us the MRS of a commodity will always decline. Let me show you using example. Here, when we calculate the marginal rate of substitution, when we come across from combination A to combination B, the marginal rate of substitution is 3. And when we come across from combination B to C, the MRS is 2. And when we come across combination C to D, the MRS is 1. So, the rate by which one commodity is substituted for another will always decline. This is what we call the principle of diminishing marginal rate of substitution, PDMRS. So, this is about the principle of diminishing marginal rate of substitution. This is all about the second revision lesson of Unit 3. Stay home, stay safe. Thank you.